Welcome back to the podcast that rocks, weekly podcast that talks about rock, metal, alternative news, just different debates, and a whole lot of rambling. I took a week off last week because I was traveling, I had to shoot concerts, and I was working on regretting the past. And that literally just premiered on YouTube. I'm going to put a link in the YouTube card if you're watching this on YouTube, and the video link below if you see this on GetRock.net. I am grateful for my patron support. I'm glad they had say in this. And I'm also thankful that they chose this album because this was not the worst one I had to get through, but man, it was still pretty rough and just kind of really scratching my head listening to why saliva became such a big deal. And it wasn't just like flash in the pan type stuff. They were around for quite a while. Their music was everywhere. It's still played in movie and TV soundtracks. Click, click, boom is, I stand by this, it's a part of pop culture. It's not going away. So whether you like Saliva or not, that's just how it's going to be. Even Josie Scott left the band years ago, and still Saliva is known, you know? I, I don't know what it's, I don't want to have to say they're a household name, but their music really is up there. I mean, you could not have avoided Click Click Boom if your life depended on it back in the day. And even now, it still holds a big place in nostalgia for rock, and... Again, I have talked about Saliva more than enough. If you were interested in me going back and seeing why their big album every six seconds was such a huge deal, please click on the YouTube link and let me know what you think there. You can leave comments below on this video too if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm glad to be done with Saliva. That is more than enough time than should be necessary in 2019 to be dedicated to this band. Since it's been two weeks since the last of the podcast that rocks, I am going to be going back a little bit because there's been quite a few announcements and a new music to dive into, a lot of bands coming back making announcements for upcoming albums. There's a lot to break down. I'm going to start with Highly Suspect, and I was very excited to hear about the new album MCID coming out, and they dropped two songs from the album. This is a band I've been following since the beginning, since Mr. Asylum came out, and that was years ago. And it's so cool to see just a three-piece band who is really about the raw style of rock and roll, do not have any gimmicks to sell, don't try to make an appearance, uh, or try to be a visual appearance, aren't about any of that. It's just their music. I used to, I made a joke, because like on their original Twitter bio back when Mr. Asylum came out, on their bio it said, highly suspect, New York, no Fs given. And that's it. That's all it said. I mean, that's such a selling point, but that really does describe Highly Suspect. I've seen them live several times. I got to interview the twins in the band, and it was this is a group that I think has all the potential in the world, and I'm very excited to see what MCID has in offer. The two songs that came out already are 16 and Upper Drugs. 16 is already getting pretty consistent radio play, both on Sirius XM like crazy, and then also starting to get the FM radio play too, so it's going to be around for a while. What is interesting about Highly Suspect is Johnny said that this is going to be a very different than the previous two albums, The Boy Who Died Wolf and Mr. Asylum. Those are albums that were Grammy nominated several times over, and they didn't win any Grammys, but at the same time, for a young band to get that much presence, to sell that well, to go on that many good tours, and they're going to go on a headlining tour in the States later this year, I think that's really impressive. For the song 16, I really dig it. This is an emotional song you could tell about breakup and just failing at a relationship, things like that. The gospel choir is a nice touch that I never would have expected. MCID, which comes out, let me look up the album and the date because of course I can't remember. It's supposed to be coming out at the beginning of next year. So there's still a little bit, of wa little bit before we actually get new Highly Suspects. But this is a group that I'm always going to sell. And I get that not it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Some people might just not be into it. There's a lot of guitar fuzz, a lot of, like, a lot of yelling, just anger. There's a lot of angst in Highly Suspect, I think is a good way to put it. I'm into it, though. I think this is a band that's great. I love hearing them live. They sound great live, which is even better. They're going to be on, going on tour with Sloth Rust, which is another th great three-piece band. They're from the Boston area. And they're not coming near me, which sucks, but I still would definitely recommend this tour if you've never heard of Highly Suspect. Check out some of their songs. Um, Lydia is the one that made them really big. They got a Grammy nomination back a few years ago. The latest song, six, uh, 16, is going to be available. I'm going to put a YouTube card for it. It'll be on GetRock.net. Check that out and let me know what you think, because this is going to be... 
if they're right, this is going to be a very different album for them, and I'm excited to see what they have to say. Because these three men are talented musicians, and I want to see what else they can do outside of the box. And here's hoping that it actually works out too, because I really enjoyed both albums, Mr. Asylum and The Boy Who Died Wolf. I can at least admit, though, that there are a lot of similarities between the two. There was only a year and a half before between those albums coming out. The Boy Who Died Wolf was kind of a surprise with how fast they got it out. This one they've taken more time with. So here's hoping the best. I'm excited for Highly Suspects. I really enjoy the band. And here we'll just have to wait and see at this point. Maybe new music will become available. Maybe we'll hear something else before the release date. All I know is I'm excited for it. When is the release date? Man, this is so unprofessional. You hear what you get? This podcast just me rambling. I'm trying to look for the release date again. I take it back. It's actually coming out in November. It's not in 2020. So it's actually going to be much sooner than we anticipated, which is even better. So look for that this November. I'm going to try my best to do an album review on that one because I am a fan of the band. Day of the Dead, no 2019, will be for Highly Suspect. Another band that released some new music over the past couple weeks and has a new album coming out is Star Set. If you've been following Rocked for a while, you know I'm a big, big Star Set fan. And I totally get this is very different from Highly Suspect, as this is a full gimmick, full backstory. Tons of lore and writing for different albums and actually making characters for things and like a story arc for the whole world and concept they're making about the future and space and time travel now and things like that there is so much going on star set underneath just the music that i can understand why it would turn some people away now the music itself has become more electronic and digital as the years have gone on this third album divisions appears to continue that trend I, for one, am totally for it. This new album, Divisions, is going to be produced entirely by Dustin Bates, the singer. And he is, let's be honest, a genius. He is literally uh, the astrophysicist type, level type genius who really goes into detail about what he's singing about, writing about, things like that. So if anyone is able to really dive deep into making sure an album was produced correctly on the technical and production side, along with writing something creative and fresh, I think Dustin's capable of it. Hearing the two songs that have been released so far, Manifest and Where the Skies End, you can tell that these are longer songs, and I can't stress this enough, it feels like Divisions is going to double down on the prog side of this. This is going to be full story arc all the way through. Where I love some Star Set singles of the past, I mean, when you have My Demons and Halo, and you go all the way to Monster from Vessels, which was huge, I love it. But at the same time, I am more interested now to see what they're going to do for a full album, and what they make in said album divisions, if they're taking a story into a new direction, they have a whole new uh, outfits for when they perform online, which look awesome, this is... They traded in, like, the space uh, astronaut-style suits, and they're going for more dystopian future-type suits. It's actually really cool-looking, and it's a good idea. It works. No one else has it. This It's probably a lot easier to work with than um, controlling the jetpacks and light-up helmets and things like that while you're on stage. But I think Star Set really has something unique that many rock bands, and especially in the style of rock that's really popular right now, aren't even touching. Star Set's in their own world right now, and that's not some play on words or pun. I really mean Star Set's come in a whole different field right now and what they're trying to accomplish, and I'm for that. I want something more unique. There's no nice way to say it. Hard rock and even metal have a lot of the same type of band. Star Set's at least offering something different. Again, though, I totally get this is, again, very far left field. It's not going to be for everyone. Just one look at it is like, what is type of gimmick is this? Is it this? It's not to the level of um, Oakley Dokley or Max Sabbath where they're just parody bands or something. This is a full gimmick, but at the same time, it's taken very serious. And you can tell there's a lot of love put into it. You can tell there's a lot of craftsmanship put into the stage presentation and how they're going to produce the album. I want to know what it's all going to entail. If this is going to be a full proggy style album, like full front to back story, not going to be focusing on singles, that's huge. I really liked Manifest. I like the flow of Where the Skies End. It's produced well. I think I actually kind of like Where the Skies End more, just because of how it flows. It's a longer track that actually 
is bookended with some of the, uh, what's a good way to put it, recordings of just old-timey space exploration type stuff. And Manifest is a lot heavier than I think a lot of people were expecting. Both are good things in my opinion. They have variety, and I'm really for that. This is a good time to be a music fan, at least for me. 2019 has been so much stronger than 2018. And 2018 had great music, but 2019 has had less crap. And there's the bands that I'm really into. They're all having new music come out at the same time, and that's awesome. Vessels comes out, or not Vessels, excuse me. Divisions comes out in September. So we're less than a month out, I believe, from the actual album release. This is going to be a long one, too. A star set does not do short little quick albums. They really spend some time, like five-minute tracks minimum. Some, I think Vessels was over 70 minutes. I'm pretty sure Divisions is going to be around that ballpark also. So saddle up if you're in to anything about what I just talked about with space exploration, space music. Not as so much a space opera, but real science fiction underneath the music and actual writing for the sake of telling a story. Check out some of their music, some of the backlog for the singles, but also check out the two songs. I want to put Manifest and Where the Skies in links for that in the comment section below and also on GetRock.net. Tell me what you think. Do you like Star Set? I know I've made my opinion very clear repeatedly. I know I'm in the minority with the Rock Coliseum. They're not big fans. I am. So tell me what you think. Do you like Star Set? Or do you not really care? Can't stand them? Love them? Just leave a comment. Let people know. Another band who released something new over the past week, and this is one that I'm actually really piqued my interest because before then I wasn't so much, the 1975 released People. Boy, oh boy, is this a total night and day difference from last year's, oh man, I'm going to botch the title of this album, uh, Brief History of Online Relationships. I'm pretty sure that's close enough off the top of my head. That was the album where myself, Crash, Mark, John, all really were kind of confused and kind of disappointed and disillusioned with the 1975 at that point. In my opinion, that's what solidified me as a, the 1975 being a singles band. They know how to write some singles, and that's it. I really enjoyed their self-titled album. But after since then, ever since then, I wasn't really that into it, and it kept getting worse. And the 1975 have Notes on a Conditional Form, which is going to be their fourth album, which is kind of the brother-sister to a Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. And that's 2020. People is the new single. If the music video is up, I'm going to definitely leave this on a YouTube card. Check this song and video out. The video is cool. This song is so much stronger and more fierce than I have ever heard the 1975. This is loud. This is in your face. Matt Healy sounds just up angry and upset. And he really, when you watch the music video, you can totally tell he doesn't care anymore. 1975, you do whatever they want. And that's an awesome attitude. The 1975 are talented musicians, but I do feel over the past few years they've gotten in a rut. And their ability to make something complete all the way through in their albums was really lacking, even though they had some killer singles. And I like the 1975. If the new album, Notes on a Conditional Forum, is even a shred of the intensity that the song People has, I'm excited. This is something fresh. This is new. This is angrier. I thought like this was more of an angrier, hard, heavier alternative rock side. It was John from ARTV when I was talking to him. There's definitely, definitely elements of real punk in this. And I totally agree. He's right on the money with that. This is exactly the type breath of fresh air that I wanted from a band who I was not sure about anymore, who I think my interest peaked a couple years ago, and I wasn't sure I would ever have it again. They totally hooked me. I want to hear what else they have upcoming on this point. I'm definitely going to review the album. I'm excited. I don't know if the rest of the album is going to be like people. Maybe they'll have a variety. I don't know. But I know I love this. The guitar fuzz. Everything on the album is heavy. The song is just the right length. Everything about it is just awesome. It's just, again, it's a shorter track. But it just, it hooks and it hits so hard. You want to sing along with it before it's over. I can't recommend watching the music video with it, though, while you hear it the first time. Again, I'll have links for it. This one is great. This is a fun song. I really, really hope this whole attitude and just intensity and everything about it just carries over into this new album. And that really is a theme that sets it apart from what 
let's be honest, last year's brief inquiry did not have. I was kind of disappointed about it. I know I'm not the only one. I know it got a lot of critic critic uh, approval, but I also know it kind of faded away pretty fast. There was like one song, I love it if we made it, um, that I really enjoyed, and that's about it. That's really a, the only memorable feature that I can um, really think of. I know there was another song, I Always Want to Die Sometimes. Maybe, I'm, again, I'm botching that because it just doesn't stick with me as much. People stuck with me almost instantly the first time I heard it. What do you think of the 1975? Do you think this new album is going to be something stronger? Do you think it's going to be more attitude, energy from the band? Do you think it's just a one-off on this upcoming album and the rest is going to be the same old status quo? Let me know what you think. All I know is I'm excited for it. This upcoming band uh, that released new music in the past week and a half or so, boy, did that cause some mixed opinions. Uh, (laughs) It's interesting, and I'm still a fan of the band, but A Day to Remember really gave something different. They're now with Fueled by Ramen, which everyone, a lot of people know that's um, the 21 Pilots big label. They're on that. You know, they have a different theme. And A Day to Remember have definitely shied away from the angry, uh, hardcore, punk, metalcore style. And they have traded in that for the song Degenerates, which I think best is described as the Happy Warp Tour sing-along song. My friends are degenerates, that type of stuff. And it's really not terrible. I'm not cashing in my chips. I am still a big fan of A Day to Remember. Wow, did this catch me off guard and not in a good way. This song really kind of wastes the talents of the musicians uh, in the band. There's nothing really to write home about. And when you pair that with the actual sing-along upbeat vibe of this track it really makes you think was this really a day to remember and it was again a a day to remember is another band they can do whatever they want but boy oh boy was i shocked when i first heard first heard this song because this feels like they're trying to cash in and catch some 13 year olds off guard it's like yeah this song's fun that type of feeling again if that's what they're going for okay but I don't know how I feel about the new album coming up, if that's what it's going to be like. (laughs) Kind of the opposite of the 1975. Man, if the 1975 would have released Degenerates and A Day to Remember would have released People, I think, man, that would have been a totally different situation. I know A Day to Remember is going on the Degenerates tour with I Prevail and Beartooth later this year. This is going to be their big push. It's the start of something special. Again, I'm still a fan of A Day to Remember. But when you hear the song, it's the most upbeat produced it's a little overproduced i have to say this is um to the level of pop radio station production levels and jeremy sounds fine the rest of the band's just kind of there behind him not doing much it's very very generic i hate to put make this comparison because i despise kids bop this sounds like a song where they just kind of beat kids bop to the punch and did their own version of a young song And again, this is not a song for kids, but when you hear it and you don't pay attention to the lyrics, it's like, this is really um, watered-down music from a band that had ferocity and anger and their delivery and the breakdowns and the heavy, heavy music they used to create back in the day. I don't know what to think about it other than I'm not a fan. I did not hate it. I know John from ARTV hated it. I'm pretty sure Crash thought it was fine. I could be misquoting both of them, excuse me, but I can say I'm not a fan. It does not make me excited to hear new music. Pairing that with Fueled by Ramen, which is um, the lighter side of Warped Tour. Let's put it that way. And I'm not really ecstatic to see the final results. I am more cautious, not cautiously optimistic, but cautious and concerned about where Day to Remember is going with this. Not to say they can't change things up if they want to, they totally can, but if this is the result, I'm not a fan. Because, boy oh boy, this sounds like they're trying to make that, uh, they're trying to make that movie uh, trailer and commercial money. Just uh, trying to play, my friends are degenerates, you know, have that as a little music sting for a commercial or a movie, just anything like that. So not what I was expecting for a day to remember for those Florida boys. You know what? 
maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're totally going to blow me away. This is the lightest thing they're doing, the most poppy produced thing they're doing, and the rest of the album's going to be crushing. Okay, but at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and go, yeah, I love it. Uh, yeah, I'm just not crazy about it. For an interesting note, on the day I'm recording this, August 25th, um, it was posted that today is the anniversary of Godsmack's debut album, their self-title. And it's been 21 years since then. I remember when that came out. I mean, they were playing uh, Keep Away and whatever like crazy on the local FM stations. New post-grunge band from Boston, really trying to do something different and angry and fierce. And I had that album. And there are songs on it I enjoyed. And I was a Godsmack defender for quite a while, too. Um, I thought I liked their live shows back in the day. I think they're still fine live depending on which show you see them on. Sometimes they're all in unison. Sometimes they just have a spotlight on Sully, but that's besides the point. Uh, I don't know if Godsmack's self-title is an album that's aged well or not, because I haven't heard it in a very long time. The song Whatever really is a very of its time frame, but still kind of holds up. The song Keep Away, which was the one that really put him on the map, um, that, had, that proved that Godsmack had some guitar hooks, you know, they could do different things. And then you get to the song Voodoo. Boy, oh boy, was that something different. I was not a fan of Voodoo, and that got played on the radio like crazy, too. Why? Why would you play Voodoo as a big single on FM stations? Ugh, I, I never got that. But at the same time, I think Godsmack self-title really is a tribute to how long the bands lasted, how... Sully has stayed the frontman of a well-known band that still gets heavy rotation and heavy airplay whenever they make new music. And Godsmack had some up and downs. They've had some decent albums. They've had some terrible albums. Uh, it's not sugar-coated. Their latest album, When Legends Rise, there was one good song that I thought was the title track, and I loved that drum opening. And the song Bulletproof got played to the point of insanity. I mean, that was number one for a long time. And that song wouldn't have bothered me so much, but that is one of the most repetitive choruses I've heard in quite a while. And that song just got... Could, you could not pay DJ FM DJs and serious DJs to not play that song. They were compelled to. Boy, oh boy, that album did not hold up. And it's barely been a year, maybe more. It's not the worst thing that came out last year, but man, it really kind of... Treaded water, let's say that. And the one before that, a thousand horsepower, I thought was fine. So I don't know what happened after that, but Godsmack has had has become a staple of hard rock, whether you like them or not. They have proven they have staying power, they have diehard fans, they have great headlining shows. I know they're going on tour later this year with Hailstorm. That's a good show. I mean, I would go see that because I love Hailstorm, and at the same time, I think Godsmack, depending on their presentation and performance, can be good, depending on the set list, if they actually do more than just show the spotlight on Sully. And I think there's... I still say there are some pros to Godsmack, even though they've gone downhill over the past few years, especially this last year. I'm interested to see where they go from here, because When Legends Rise was not what I think a lot of people were hoping for. And I pass this question to you. Has Godsmack overstayed their welcome? Do you think they still have it? Do you think they could still deliver something good? Do you think they ever delivered something good? I know a lot of people hate Godsmack too. I am no longer a defender of Godsmack. I'm just kind of in the ballpark of it is what it is. They're just there. Godsmack is Godsmack. Don't love them. Don't hate them. But I want to know what other people's opinions on Godsmack are, because it's been 21 years since that debut, and that's still a big album that a lot of people had back in the day and got a lot of attention in the hard rock community, and got a, it, that got MTV and VH1 airplay. That should show you that it was a big deal in a time frame where if you weren't a Backstreet Boy or a part of NSYNC, you didn't get attention. So you know what? They had to do something right. Leave a comment and let me know what you think about Godsmack. Good or bad. To start wrapping things up, one artist I want to talk about is Poppy, who is really starting to become a big thing. She did the collaboration with Fever 333. For those who are not aware, Poppy is a pop metal artist. Think baby metal to a certain extent, but not from Japan. Uh, I think she has something special. 
I'm not crazy about everything she does, but I definitely don't hate it, and some of the stuff is really catchy. She just released a new song, Concrete, last few days ago. Um, I'll have a link for that one. This is... You really have to think. She is going out of her way to catch people off guard, to be a little bit more odd and weird and dark in her lyrics, while giving this overly uh, pop presentation and really looking like this beaming, glowing light. I think this is something that helps shake things up. Poppy actually got added to Aftershock Festival in Sacramento, which is headlined by Slipknot and Tool and Korn and Blink-182 and Rob Zombie. And then there's Poppy. I'm up for it. I'm totally fine with that. She could be that little dose of variety. I know a lot of people, a lot of the metal elitists, the purists, are going to be upset that Poppy's getting that much attention. Give it a shot. I think she has something unique, at the very least. Check out the song that she did with Fever 333. Check out her newest song, Concrete. It's different. If you're looking for something completely new to hear her very pop presentation, but with like a metal background behind it, you it's very hard to describe without really playing it, and I can't do that here. So check that one out if you're interested, because that's totally something worth keeping an eye on, because Poppy's going to start blowing up soon. And I'm totally for that. I'm fine with it. And I just hope that more people are open to things like this and rock and metal. Because if things don't progress or give variety, then they stagnate in the music scene. And it's been like that for the last few years. So we need more variety and things like this. So give Poppy a chance if you're interested in something completely different. Gonna keep this episode a little bit shorter than the hour format usually because I'm just trying to get back into things and I have so much more to do. One thing I did want to point out is next month I'm going to make a top 10 best of video. I want to do a more positive one. And this one is something I haven't really... I'm sure it's out there, but I haven't seen done in a while. Top 10 best songs in rock with featured guests or a special guest. Think um, Queen featuring David Bowie. Aerosmith featuring Run DMC. And then a bunch of other ones too that may not be as famous. I haven't seen a list like that done in a while, and there's many, and that's becoming more of a trend now where bands are including guest singers, guitarists, whatever, and it's working well. I mean, two recent examples, very recent, are for Volbeats, having different uh, musicians come in on their album, and then Killswitch Engage, like, going back and working with Howard Jones. So, it's definitely not a new concept, but at the same time, it's becoming more of a trend now, and I think that's good. I think that adds a little bit more to a band that's already been around for a while. I uh, open this up if you have comments or suggestions on that. Feel free to leave a YouTube link in the YouTube comments below or just in any way. Just hit me up on the socials. All the links are in the description. What song do you think is the best one or the best song in rock that has a special guest attached to it? Where they brought someone in to help out. There are many. And I totally get that too. But I want your feedback and opinion. I'm going to ask my patrons. I'm going to ask on Discord. I think there's a lot of potential for a list like this, and I just wanted to do something a little more positive. I did a Regretting the Past, I did 10 crazy onstage meltdowns, you know, it's time for something a little more uplifting and talk about good music again. So I'm looking forward to doing that, I want your feedback on that one. Coming up later this week is the day where all tool memes die, and that's because Fear Inoculum is finally coming out. A lot of us made jokes, me included. Uh, <laughs> that this day would never come. Well, the album's already finished. We're getting it August 30th. It's finally happening. And it's a beast, too, over 80 minutes. For a lot of Tool fans, that sounds like heaven. I stand by what I originally predicted. I see this album being a long jam session for minutes on end, and I'm totally fine with that. Tool's capable of doing that. I don't know if it'll be the best thing they've ever done, but I'm willing to bet it's gonna be pretty good. So. I'm very excited for that. Also, Wage War has an album coming out, um, Pressure, and I've heard that actually. Um, it got sent to me as a like a promo copy. It's solid. I want to do an album review on that one too because it is really good. It's a lot catchier than I think I would have expected from Wage War, and I think that's kind of awesome. So there's still a lot of good music coming out. Tool and Wage War have albums coming out the same day. Uh, <laughs> Kind of sucks to be Wage War, though. They're not going to get as much attention because they're coming up, going up against the Legends. But, you know, that is what it is. And Wage War is not going anywhere. I have been a fan of Tool since the 90s. Since I was pretty young and still getting into rock and metal. But at the same time, the wait and anticipation 
for something from Tool has been so long and anticipation's been so high for everything. I wonder if that's going to affect a lot of people's judgment on what they hear for the first time. Because Tool have pretty much sold this as a long album. I mean, this is like seven tracks, then there's more in the digital version if you get it that way. Um, I don't know if they break it down, break down the original tracks more, or if they add like a few more sequences. But it's a lot of Tool. So in essence, they are finally delivering on what they said they would do, and they're giving people exactly what they want. I'm excited for a jam album. I'm excited for one I could just play in the background and no matter what the situation, driving, work, working out, whatever. I just want something great. I want to see what Maynard and Alex and Dana and Justin all have up their sleeves. Because this album was not just a quick recording session. This took some. This took a while. There were a lot of tracks that were left on the cutting room floor, too, because they said a lot of the songs they had written over the past few years didn't live up to the Tool standard. So I'm excited to see what does meet that standard. I want Fear Inoculum to blow me away. Again, it doesn't have to be the best thing they've ever done. I don't think they'll beat Lateralis, in my opinion. But at the same time, I want this to be something memorable and something solid and something I can come back to for years along with many other Tool fans. That being said, thank you again for checking this episode out. It's a short one because it's just solo. I am going to have more guests on future of the podcast that rocked episodes, just working in the getting back into the flow of things. Leave a comment if there's anything you have questions about. If you want to hear certain topics or certain bands talked about, leave a comment about that too. Please subscribe to both the main channel, Rocked, and to this channel, the podcast that rocked on YouTube. That helps out a ton. Also available on Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iTunes, Apple, Google, everything you can think of. And uh, once again, thanks for sticking with me through this run. Hopefully we can get the subscriber count to 1,000 so I can start monetizing these podcasts on YouTube and actually make this more of a make a better go of this so that way I know there's actual gauge interest. Tell your friends, share the videos out. Again, thank you so much for sticking with me and we'll see you next week.